What's up everybody, it's your host Claire Dragoon, and in today's video guys, I have got a special attacking method I want to uh, bring to you guys, and for that I've got a special guest, his name is Io Starter. how are you doing Io Starter? Oh, I'm doing peachy, how about yourself? I can't complain brother. Well look, I, I checked out this attack Io, and I thought, wow, this is amazing. Uh, this attack is very unique in how it deals with the enemy royals and CC at times, just depending on how you work it. And and the other thing was, uh, when I first seen this attack, I immediately thought it was one kind of attack, and then I realized quickly that you had kind of stumbled onto a hybrid attack that was in between two different styles of attacks. And the attacks that I'm speaking of is the Dragon Reject attack, which uses four dragons to kill the enemy uh, queen, usually, or the enemy royals. And then, like, just regular drag uh, Laloon, which uh, it uses a lot more dragon. So this is more of a drag assist attack uh, with a Lalo back in, right? That is correct, Goon. All that right. Is so uh, just in the matter of time constraints, uh, Io, let's get into your thought process on this attack, the hows and whys, and just tell me uh, what you've done, and I'll try, to, uh, I'll try to draw it out for our viewers as you go along. All right, so the base that we're looking at is uh, the uh, number eight base. Right. AY2. Um, my first thought process for these kinds of attacks are, mm -hmm. where's the queen located? Where's the is queen? She... Circling the queen there. We got her right there. And then you've got to look at, are there multiple air defenses near the queen? And they're not. If, they're, if there's just one, then you can definitely take it out easily oh there is one near her actually yeah so with these kinds of attacks you want to take out the air defense that's close to the queen if it's close to the edge then you can possibly take it out uh with other means other than a zap quake but for the attack that i'm doing i use the zap quake because it's kind of closer to the core of the base right and so with this kind of attack you want to hit the queen with the dragons and then use your royals to either get an air defense or get some high priority uh, defenses. Right. Okay. So uh, with high priority defenses for this attack, since the first half is just dragons and royals, the second uh, uh, portion would be the Lalo. And you want to look at where are the archer towers and wizard towers located? Because those are what's going to mainly deal with uh, your la your lalo portion. Right. So, looking at the base, that whole top uh, top quad quadrant at like twelve o'clock, uh -huh. that's a huge middle finger for lalo. So absolutely. I decided instead of going for air defenses that are really close to the outside, that lalo the lalo could easily take care of i decided to drop my royals at 12 o'clock so changed it up a bit um, instead of going for an air defense with the royals i went for the wizard towers and archer towers okay all right i see so you're just going to try you're not really worried about the ad's uh with this attack you're just going to concentrate on taking down the point defense at the top of the map that is very that's correct all right well let's go into it i'll, I'll try to keep up with the io and we'll We'll get we'll get to going. All right. Sounds good. All right. All right. Just talk us through, and uh, I, I know you're going to put your royals at the top of the map here. Uh, and so, you any particular side you put them on, or you just put them up on the middle elixir storage unit? Well, I want I want the king to path kind of towards the enemy king. Right. And I just have the queen dropped so she's behind the king um for her i just want her to get the the top wizard tower and archer tower and then anything else is bonus essentially all right so i'm gonna mark her right here and she's just behind the king and so you're going for basically the at least an archer tower and a, and a wizard tower and maybe this mortar and that's pretty oh, much de definitely the mortar and um, so if you look at my comp, I've got two wizards. One wizard is to help assist the king and the queen. Uh -huh. and the other wizard is to help funnel the dragons. Ah. I didn't mention that before, but right. if you look down at what, about 430 where the 
the gold storage and the gold mine are. Right. There's not really anything keeping that from being attacked by a wizard. Ah, I see. Out of the arch tower and the cannon. Right. So that is uh, that is free freebies for me, and that'll help with my uh, dragon funnel, which you'll see once we start the attack. So we'll put a whiz on that gold storage? Yeah, on the gold storage. Right. The... So if you look at that, once that wizard takes out that gold storage in the gold mine, I'm going to drop the dragons on that elixir collector. Or, yeah, elixir collector. Right right next to where the gold storage is. Gotcha. And it'll, and all four of the dragons will pivot counterclockwise from 3 o'clock to, you know, 12 o'clock. Right, gotcha. And through that, they'll pick up the queen. <laughs> right, because once once the uh, archer tower starts targeting the drags, the queen is out of range, it looks like, at this point. Uh, but once that archer tower kind of pecks at the dragons, they're, they're going to turn in and deal with him. Yeah. And so okay. then that's going to put the queen in their effective range. So I'm just going to circle that box, the queen's box, and she will be the target. Correct. So once uh, once my royals take out the top portion and then I start my dragons, mm -hmm. you'll see that I'll start my lalo portion almost immediately after dropping the drags because they're not affected by uh, anything else. Right. Because I kind of it, – it, the base kind of sets itself up for – hitting it at three points at the same time almost. Mm -hmm. And you'll see one thing I sh should have uh, taken into account is I didn't take a max quake when I zap quaked. Uh. And you'll see um, how that affects the sweeper that's next to the air defense that I'm taking down. So the air defense you're taking down is the one near the queen with a zap quake, right? Correct. All right, so I'm just going to do this. I'm going to circle here, and then I'm going to circle, you know, kind of like in a brown. Let's get right here. And this is your zap quake, and you're trying to take out this air defense and actually trying to get this uh, sweeper as well, but you say it didn't go down. All right, so for your um, for your lie low portion, uh, where are you going to bring it in at, Io? Because basically we're looking at three air defense in a row really close together. So two hounds are going to get you through that, right? Correct. Right. But um, I decided I'd go with the third hound just to be safe. Oh, well, you definitely are safe with three hounds for sure. Yeah. So I decided I was going to go in at 9 o'clock. Right, 9 o'clock. Split it, uh, one hound at 8.30 and one hound at 9.30. Gotcha. Um, and then... The I'm last gonna hound going to come in towards the mortar, I guess? Yeah, towards the mortar. Right. And that'll be after the first uh, air defense drops. Right, right. And then you're going to bring some balloons in on the cannon, the archer tower, uh, the mortar. Or actually, the mortar will probably suck them up because it's kind of out front, isn't it? Correct. Yeah, I'll, you'll see that the first loons that I drop are two loons for that cannon next to the archer tower in that uh, compartment around gotcha. 7 o'clock. Yeah. And that's just to help funnel the loons um, into the into the air defense right. and not have them uh, go towards 6 o'clock. I mm -hmm. want them to go towards 9 o'clock. Right. But you'll see that uh, <laughs> there's a pesky seeking air mine that gets one of the loons, but it, it still works out in the end. They'll, they still path correctly. Right, right. And then you bring in, okay, so I got two balloons on the cannon. Did you do two on the mortar, or did you do a little bit thicker uh, than that on I, the mortar? I, I did about five on the mortar. Okay, five. I, I, I marked the wrong one. So you got five. You're coming in heavy right there. And as those are working through, you're going to bring some more balloons in at the top, right? That's correct. I'll be bringing pretty much the rest of the balloons with the last hound. Okay. So how many are coming in there, you reckon? I uh, believe it's six or five or six balloons. Five or six. And then at this point, you know, you've used no spells on your queen and king. That is a total sacrifice. So that's a great, uh, you know, usage of them uh, because there's no spell usage there at all. Uh, so are you going to be using any rage or anything towards the bottom with the drags on the queen kill? 
I will not. I will not be using any spells on the Royals or the Dragons. Oh, my God. So all your spells are going to be for your Lalo portion. That is correct. So your Dragons are going to be dealing with the CC, correct? The CC, actually, this hit was a secondary hit. Okay. So I knew what the CC was, and it was a Hound. Oh, perfect. Perfect. So, yeah, it's, it's perfect. Okay, so now we know that there's a Lava Hound in the CC. That really just sets things up for this attack so nicely. However, the Dragons could have dealt with the CC if it were okay. the case. So, now, as you go here, obviously you're going to be using Haste and Rage, correct, for your Lalo? That is correct. Okay, so where's your, your spell placements? What was your thought process on this? Well, spell placement, I was thinking first two hastes were on the two mortars. So the mortar at 830, I was going to haste those wounds in. Gotcha. And then the mortar at uh, 10 o'clock or 1030, I was going to haste those loons in. And then I was going to rage over the expo, um, the bottom expo. Right. Like leading that rage more towards the cannon and the two air defenses just to help with uh, some of the uh, Teslas. There are some Teslas in there. Right. And I, w I want to get through those Teslas pretty fast mm -hmm. with balloons. And then the last haste, I was just going to lead it over the last air defense uh, leading into the the top expo compartment. Gotcha. So this looks like a pretty solid plan, um, but you do have some more spells here, Io. I'm, I'm counting uh, just uh, basically two and a half spells here. Where, where's the rest of your spells? <laughs> They're going on an air defense. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Oh, that's right, the quake. The qu Yeah, my apologies, man. I forgot all about that quake. That quake... <laughs> But okay, so it looks like a great plan, and let's go and take a look at the actual attack. All right, Io, now that we've went through the plan, let's take a look at the actual attack. All right. And just kind of walk so, us through it. Yeah. Yeah. So, as you can see, I start with that funnel wizard, that, you know, taking out those pesky pesky storages and whatnot just to help pivot the dragons. Right. At the same time, you know, getting rid of that air defense. Right. And I see you didn't get the uh, you didn't get the the blower as you were were saying. Yeah, it's it lived at zero health. If, if I had a level five or level four uh, quake instead, that would have definitely gone down. All right, your king's already in trouble. And here comes your uh, drags. This is a multi-phase attack for sure. You waited to the last minute to, to hit that ability on that king, man. Wow. But your queen got some super value. Oh, yeah. She, she took out that whole entire top side. As you can see, I'm not going to use her ability because I do not want that hound to pop. Right, and that's a smart move. That is a pro-level move there, Io. Thank you. And then you can see I started the low low portion. Two two uh two loons on the cannon, pasted the loons into the mortar. Right, I see. And then I raged over that compartment. Yeah, and you brought those other balloons in a little bit different than I wrote down. You brought them in towards the, the actual point there at nine o'clock. I had them coming in at the yeah. top mortar, but it's okay. Yeah. Well, I was originally planning that and then I kinda had to change that up just to make sure <laughs> and your drags are just helping out quite nicely you got excellent pops from your hounds i think three hounds okay. was a great call by the way okay. um that all, all, all three ended up popping in the end and uh, there was no splash to really take out the pups right where i was entering from so i got a whole lot of value from those pups themselves so now I'm going to speed it up because it, you just wrecked it, dude. It's completely yeah. wrecked. So, Io, let's get over and let's look at this next attack. You did the same attack again. So, let's check this one out and let's talk about it. Okay. All right, Io, we're taking a look at number 25, and uh, you've seen that same attack on this base. Now, to me, you know, the naked eye here, this base looks a lot different than the other one. Somewhat similar as far as the queen. She's out on her own. Uh, which obviously uh, attracts you to, the, to this attack, uh, but the air defense are not quite the same. So uh, let me let me hear your thought process on how to attack this base. 
All right. Well, this base was different because there wasn't really an air defense uh, around the queen, so I really didn't have a problem with the dragons, you know, uh, being hit by an air defense while going for the queen. Right. And this was a fresh hit, so I didn't really know the CC, but the dragons, if there was any uh, air targeting uh, CC, the dragons would have been able to take that, care of that pretty fast. Right. And so the plan for this attack was to um, funnel the dragons, um, starting at around 6 o'clock, using one dragon to funnel the rest of the three dragons. Uh-huh. And then using the royals, actually, at 4.30 to take out that air defense behind the town hall. All right, so you're going to bring your drags in exactly where uh, towards the bottom of the map. Um, obviously, yeah. to kill the royals, you're going to bring them. What, what are you going to latch them on to create your funnel? Well, I'm going to latch them on to – so I drop a dragon at that 6 o'clock builder hut. 6 o'clock builder hut. Yeah, I can't get down there, but I have to go this way. Yeah, gotcha. And it comes yeah. into the camp? It comes into the camp, and that will help pivot the other three dragons to go towards – uh, the queen and king going clockwise. Right, right. When so camp. Right, right. You're just trying to cut that camp off, and then you're going to put those other ones on the gold mine, and then they'll turn into the royals. And at that point, they're going to pull the CC and engage the royals at the same time. Correct. And a wizard tower, it looks like. So you're <laughs> definitely going to be using a rage here, right? That is correct. All right, so I I, feel, I just had a feeling on that one. So you're not going to get away as cheap on this one uh, when it comes to uh, dealing with stuff. So um, on your on, on as that's going on now, that's that's your plan for your queen kill and your CC kill. So let's talk about the other parts of this plan. All right. So the other parts of the plan are, like I said, I was going to. Uh, go for the air defense behind the town hall with the royals using a wizard to help funnel the royals so once that dragon takes out the camp I'm going right. to drop a wizard just to the left of that or to the right of that on the uh, that, the building next to it so the wizard will uh, take out that to help funnel the king and queen to go counterclockwise up towards 3 o'clock right and while that's happening, the queen will most likely step into the pocket to get the air defense down, and she actually does that, which is great. <laughs> so your royals are coming in. You're going to put your royals about on maybe that, that uh, builder hut or the uh, elixir pump near the town hall? I'm putting them on the elixir pump just next to the dark elixir drill. Dark elixir drill. So, oh, that one. That That's so, where I got your funnel wizard. I must have messed that yeah, up. But yeah. anyway. Okay, so your royals are coming in. Royals. Mm -hmm. And they're going to turn and go up this way, and you want them basically to take out this air defense. Gotcha. That is correct. And that's all I have them do. I don't expect any more from them. <laughs> right, right. So how much value do you expect to get from them? Do you think they'll make it down to the, the gold storage area before they they phase out? Well, it's, it, it was a possibility, but I was expecting them to phase out right when the queen got to the archer tower. Oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. All right, so you're getting one AD down. Now your la low has to begin, and these I see these uh, sweepers here are not in the greatest position to threaten you. So, no, they they make they made this space so much easier. <laughs> right, right. So are you going to come in, uh, you know, towards the two thirty or three o'clock area and come in behind that sweeper on the top, or are you coming in from the other direction? I am coming in at two thirty. On that right, and, and that makes those sweepers totally ineffective. You're going to be coming into this sweeper at the end of the Lalo, in which that doesn't matter. So, all right, so you're coming in with a hound, um, basically, and let me change colors for the hound. We'll, we'll just do the hound in black right now. So you're coming in right here with this hound. Uh, how many hounds are you using on this one, Io? The same? Yeah, about four loons, and I want to haste them in. Because the air defense is on the outside, I want to haste them into it. And that'll help with the rest of the pathing of the loons because that'll cut off them pathing towards 3 o'clock. And the rest of the loons will path counterclockwise from 2 o'clock back to 10 o'clock. 
essentially. Right. So let me get the hound placements. Uh, we've skipped that. I got one coming in towards the air defense, uh, and you usually put two on the first uh, AD, right? Well, I just put one on the first AD because it's uh, going to go down extremely fast. Ah, uh, because it's near the side. I got you. Yeah, once the loons haste into it, it, it drops immediately. And how many loons are you coming in with this uh, with this attack? Um, on this first with, AD? Uh, first AD, I'm coming in with four. Okay. And then I'm going to come in with uh, some more at 12 o'clock. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, that's and that's going to be with your next hound as well, right? That's correct. I'm going to drop the hound around 12 o'clock as well. All right. So, I, And then now the how about the third hound? Is he coming in there or is he going to come in at the other AD? Uh, he, he'll come in there as well. Okay, so two hounds coming in. All right, so on the loons, how many how many loons are you coming in with at this top area? I believe I dropped around six loons. Oh, that's pretty heavy. Yeah. Pretty heavy. It, so the initial four will help uh, make the pivot for the rest of the loons, and these loons I'll make sure to haste in. Um, I pretty much use since I only use a rage on the dragons and I didn't use any spells on the heroes, I'm going to use all of my spells essentially on that one side. Mm -hmm. Top left side. Gotcha. For the loons and the hound. And you'll, you'll see it like that whole entire side of the base will drop <laughs> in less than five seconds. Right, so so you, I've got two I've got two haste on the hounds and loons coming in to the two ads so far. So where are the other spells coming in at? So I'm gonna pretty much like uh, drop the rage and the two haste mm -hmm. um, uh, as I'm going towards the third uh, air defense. Okay, so, so rage. All right. So I've got so two I'll, haste. I'll, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I got two haste. I got one where you hasted balloons into the first AD. I've got another haste around the wizard tower area going into the second AD, and then mm -hmm. I've got a rage at the third AD. Uh, that is correct. So the rage will literally be sitting on top of that third AD. And so um, the next uh, spell placement would be. Well, I will be using all my haste in that last rage to get the loons and the hounds to that third AD. Right, and we're, we're there. Um, so I, I guess, I mean, at this point, we'll just see the attack um, and just check it out. Because I've only got 10 balloons here, so I know you brought some more balloons in at the top. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had several loons that I, I could have squagged. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. So did you bring any on the wizard tower and archer tower or no? At the on the uh, kind of like ten o'clock area, ten thirty, not or nine thirty, in that area uh, there. I don't. I did not. Mm -hmm. I just used that huge clump with the haste and the rage. They took out everything. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> you'll you'll see it in the replay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's check it out because ultimately uh, these attacks, I'm sure, I owe. There's there's a lot of planning, but there's also some feel to them and. Anybody that uh, understands air attacking knows that there's a lot of feel in air attacks. You know, as an attacker, when to speed your balloons up, when they need some gas, and when they don't, right? That is correct. All right, so let's get forward here, or let's go forward and look at the attack. All right, sounds good. All right, Io, we've done all the planning we could. Now let's take a look at the attack. Okay, sounds good. So... If you uh, look at the attack, I start that dragon at uh, six o'clock, and uh, this is during that pesky giant in the builder hut event, so he had that little bit to deal with. But he uh, starts to make the funnel for the rest of the drags, and I drop them off. Right. And I start dropping uh, the king, and then the funnel wizard, and then I'll drop the queen right afterwards. I didn't even see what was in the CC, man. It it it, it disappeared. It was it was a baby <laughs> dragon, and I think uh, a couple of wizards or something. Wow. I mean, just completely smashed here, man. Yeah. And then oh, uh, there's there's the Valk. <laughs> I'm watching your royals right now. Um, your king's about to die. 
you almost made it to the mark where I was thinking you were going to go. Yeah, uh, and he gets the Archer Tower, which is where I was expecting her to go down. And now you came in with two hounds on the first AD. That's what I was wondering. Like uh, that. Uh, so you did I, come in. On your third hound, you came in at 12 o'clock. That's correct. And so yeah. the haste are, are there so far, uh, looking pretty good. You got four balloons uh, left in the bag. Uh, you got another haste, which I did not mark. I marked the rage there, but your rage and haste are overlapping. And I think that's what you meant when we were talking. I, I kind of missed uh, missed that, but it's okay. Uh, and it is... looks like you have completely uh, shattered this base. Yeah. And it was very, very quick, man. This oh, yeah. this attacking it's method <laughs> is super strong, super strong. And guys, I, I you know this this attacking method. Like I said, it, this is not a drag laloon. This is uh, technically because of the numbers of the drags. There's very few drags in this attack. I would consider this more of a drag assist attack, just like you see the Valkyrie assist attacks. So if we actually name this attack, I'm going to let Io come up with something uh, because ultimately it's his attack he's doing here. Now it's, it's kind of like, oh, and the swag poison, by the way. It's kind of <laughs> like a dragon reject attack. If you guys have seen that attack, I've got a video on it, and it's basically the same thing. The the um, the dragons deal with the CC and the queen typically, and there's back end hogs. It's not a lalo on the back end. So with this, uh, La Revolution, aka Io Starter, has uh, hybrid the attack with another attack, and he's come up with this. So and this is a great attacking method. I am very impressed, by the way. Well, thank you, thank you. Now, Io, um, I, this is the time in the video where I always give uh, each attacker time to shout out their clan or clan family. Uh, would you like to do so? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for letting me uh, come on and speak and, you know, walk through an attack. Hopefully, you know, it'll help someone out with planning. They'll see something different because that's, you know, how I usually figure out attacks is I watch videos. But, um... Yeah, as for shout outs, shout out to the clan family, the circle. Nice. Nice. Uh, I happen to know about this uh, clan family. It's it's mine as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then of course shout out to Sunny the Warriors and also uh, helping out with the uh, planning attacks sometimes and uh, I'll also shout out to uh, uh, the clan that I've been helping out with. Uh, too swift, too sure. I'll right, say. they're in our family as well, and we all help each other out. So definitely, the Circle of Clans has many clans, and we all operate from the same server. But yes, uh, Io, um, this will help other people out, man. As far as you talking about, you hoping it helps people out. It will. This attack is very strong, and the thing is, both of the bases you attacked were completely different when it comes to the AD setup. And that's the thing that I was looking at. Okay, because a lot of attacks uh, tend to like a certain type of base, but this attack, it, it looks like it can be utilized as long as the queen or the royals are out to the side somewhere. This attack can be used if you have the eye for it. That is correct. <laughs> All right. Well, look, I, I really appreciate you coming on, man. I'm going to try to get this out because I feel that this attack uh, strategy is very viable. And I think it's going to help some of my viewers. So thank you a lot, man, for taking the time to come on. And with that being said, guys, I am out of here.